The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for Trade What You See with your host, Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, folks. Um, the first chart that I'm going to start with today is the chart of the tick index. Uh, this was furnished by um, Tyler Dern from uh, Zero Hedge, and it shows that we had a record ticks on Friday when the market gapped up uh, 200 points in the Dow. Uh, you know, we exploded. We did. We, the Dow has not made new highs from yesterday. The S and P cash made a higher high by two ticks. Uh, the futures did not make a higher high. The NASDAQ made a higher high by two ticks. And so, uh, you know, we have made a higher high, but the, the New York Stock Exchange had not done it either. So this is going to be, uh, you know, the thing that is uh, uh, going to be interesting to watch here. Now, the next chart also comes from Zero Hedge. And uh, what it is is it shows the volume of how the uh, S&P uh, traded during this time. And this is, I think it's very important for those of you that use the um, uh, overnight trading and stuff, because you'll notice that the volume here uh, was really, really small. And then all of a sudden, you'll notice that the, when the report came out, the market went, uh, you know, basically ballistic, went from uh, 287, 2087 all the way up to 20, uh, 2015, and you can see it. It did it on extremely low volume, and it's really, you know, it's really silly to trade into a report. Whether you're right or wrong is still silly because there's illiquidity in there, and it's really a crapshoot, and you don't really need that unless you really have an opinion of one way or the other. I guess then you could do it, but this is really telling you that the small volume that was involved here was uh, really not very much at all. So uh, keep in mind that uh, these things uh, have a tendency to play out. Now, this number that they talked about, uh, you know, they call it the Goldilocks number because they said that because it was such a good number that the Federal Reserve was not going to raise interest rates. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, wake up. Look at the Treasury bond contract. It's heading for, uh, you know, oblivion. I mean, it's it's almost getting down to where it was just the other day. We've already violated the 618. We're barely testing the 786 right now, and we get below 153. This is not going to be very uh, very pretty on the charts. So uh, interest rates are going higher. It's not a question of uh, if they're going to do it. It's a question of when, and they'll probably do it in June would be my guess. They're going to surprise someone. But this market has got a higher interest rate thing built into it already, uh, in my opinion. I don't know if it'll affect the prices or not. Um, that's a fundamental thing that I don't know anything about. But we are seeing a little divergence here after that tremendously, you know, explosive move that we had. It wasn't as big as the one we had two Fridays ago, if you'll remember, where we were up uh, over 300 points on the Dow. We were only up 275 on Friday, but, you know, still they're very, very big, and they need to follow through. And so far today, when it's still early, it hasn't followed through yet. So, you know, keep in mind that these things are done on not quite the volume that you'd like to see and the follow-through that you would like to see. But if we do go in new highs in the New York Stock Exchange Index uh, over these next few days, higher than we were on April 27th, then I will have to say that with uh, with what, what, what we have going with uh, – Basil's uh, move to the upside would certainly be the same thing. One second, I have to take a little drink of water. Okay. All right. We have first question we had was uh, uh, about Apple. And, um, you know, I, I really have no opinion other than I think that high at 133 is going to hold for quite some time. I don't know anything about the uh, the Apple Watch. I happened to see one for the first time uh, this past weekend, and uh, I frankly wasn't impressed. But, uh, you know, it had too many ga ga gadgets and whistles on it, so I was not able to, to really uh, do much uh, with it. So uh, the thing that we have to do is keep in mind that uh, these things, just because they say they're great, they don't necessarily have the same uh, movement that we have with some of the other things. Now, I wanted to show a pattern that is very, very important here because it's completing again for the third time 
Uh, if you'll give me one second, if I can uh, toggle this correctly, and that is, this is the uh, the E Mini S and P uh, over the past uh, several, um, about the last six weeks, and you so you see that we have a head and shoulders pattern forming here, and we also have another. Um, those are called uh, shooting star patterns, and we have another one forming today. If we close below uh, 2105 in the uh, futures, uh, in the June futures, then that would complete that, and uh, you would see that we would have a uh, head and shoulders pattern with that shooting star pattern. And those are very, very bearish. We've seen this happen uh, in wheat and a few other things down the road here, but uh, you want to watch that, uh, you know, very, very closely because it's uh, it's an incredible. Uh, important thing. Now, I wanted to, I, I couldn't believe this when I heard this uh, uh, at the end of the week on Friday, uh, the fact that uh, the, uh, the VIX index actually had an up week. With all that action that we had on Friday, there was an up week in the VIX index, and it's actually up today. So that, that to me was really surprising to me. I mean, it gapped down, you know, left a huge gap, one of the biggest gaps we've had since, you know, way back in the last October uh, with all that uh, tick buying and everything that we had on the beginning. But the fact that that VIX index could, could actually close higher on the week actually shocked me. And with the market higher today, the VIX was also higher. So someone's coming in buying a little bit of protection, whether it means very much or not, you know, we'll have to, uh, have to wait and see. Uh, the importance of that April 27th date is really where it all lies, folks, in my opinion. As long as we don't take that out, we do have a chance, you know, for the market to move uh, a little bit uh, uh, a little bit lower as long as we don't take that out. Now, whether it's going to be a major correction or not, which I think it will be, and it should surprise some people, but maybe the shorts will be surprised. They certainly were on Friday. But this reminds me that back in the in the 1980s, when I was trading during 82 to 84, when I was on the floor of the Merck, those three years, the big number to watch was the M1 and M2 numbers. They came out every Friday, and uh, that number would move the market. But it, it didn't come out until 1.15. And that's when the uh, that was 15 minutes after the market was open. However, the S and P futures we didn't have overnight markets, but the S and P futures traded into that report. So there were actually traders in the pit, you know, waiting to see what that number was. And if you could see the machine from where you were or had somebody signal to you whether it was a positive or negative number, you had a little bit of a jump on the market and could easily get in there and either buy or sell, and it would be an immediate profit. I mean, it was like, uh, well, it was very, uh, what do you call creative trading, but uh, that only lasted for about three months, and then the Merck caught on that people were doing that, and then uh, they moved on. I didn't do it. I just saw them doing it. But uh, that's some of the things that they used to do. And I'm sure they do the same things, uh, you know, the, like they're doing now. But who knows? Uh, it's just amazing. The most amazing thing to me, folks, uh, for this past year is the fact that uh, J.P. Morgan had an almost $19 billion in fines that they paid over these past couple of years. And not one person has ever spent a day in jail. And if that's not the definition of white-collar crime, I don't know what is. But that there's something wrong here when we have something like this going on. And then you'll you'll see a pretty good idea that uh, uh, this has got to change. You just can't let them do things like uh, rigging forex and other stuff. And you know it's just not fair. But unfortunately, they they hold the cards, and that's what you have to deal with. But uh, we'll have to. Uh, just let it play out the way it is. But I don't think it's fair, but uh, that's an amazing statistic to me. I just really, uh, really actually, you know, blew me away. Uh, someone asked a question um, uh, today, and they dropped me an email asking me about the Bradley model. Uh, the Bradley model is still, you know, we had a date that came in on uh, May the 8th. Uh, that was the day of the new moon. We had a couple other things that were, that were there, but uh, that report, you know, blew everything out of proportion so fast that it made it look like, uh, you know, that it might have inverted. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. If we make new highs uh, in the stock market here uh, in the next few 
uh, days, uh, you know, this is going to tell us that we are really looking at something really, really serious. It was already looking serious, but it could be even more serious. That's the, the thing that we're watching. We're having a, a follow through in some of these currencies with the British pound up a couple hundred points, uh, following through with the election results that we had. Uh, last week, and uh, that market is uh, looks like it's breaking out to the upside. If it's not making a, a double top up here at this 156 level, it's still a little too early to say that it could possibly be a double top. But just something you want to watch at. Now, the one that market folks they really should pay attention to, and that's the one that I posted in the um, the Tiger Den uh, when I first started the show, and that is the junk bond market. Uh, believe it or not, with bonds getting hit again, uh, the, bond, the, the junk bond market is still going up. I mean, it is just amazing how people are, are just forgetting about the quality of the junk bond, and they're going after, uh, you know, those bonds as opposed to the, um, you know, the U.S. Treasuries. And believe me, this is this is not a good thing. I know it looks good right now, but this is not how uh, normal markets operate. And so. Watch that junk bond market because I think you're going to come in one morning and it's going to be uh, under a great deal of pressure. And I think that's where the real problem lies. It's the, the, the big problem with the market is not the stock market. I don't know about bubbles. So, you know, there might be some bubbles. They certainly have some indication of bubbles. But the real bubble is in corporate debt and junk bonds. That's where the bubble lies. We've had debt go absolutely ballistic. It looks like a flagpole. Uh, it goes to Isaac Newton's, you know, law of motion. What goes up must come down. So it's just a matter of time. We're starting to see, you know, certain signs of the of the market cracking a little bit here and there. Whether it's going to be anything from Greece or not, I have no idea. Uh, it could be the U.S. dollar. I don't know what it could be. All I can know, all I know is, is that you're looking at something that could be very, very dangerous. Uh, financially are in these junk bonds They're, they just look uh, they look good now but believe me when the time comes it's not going to be nearly as good as what you might think it would be so keep in mind that's an important thing uh, you know to look at the key here is the fact that we had all this news uh, on Friday and how good it was however if we uh, close below those lows that we made on uh, would have to be down about 20, pound, 20 points, would have to be down about 200 points in the Dow today uh, to make any type of reversal. And uh, with the Dow down, you know, only a very uh, small amount, only down 60 uh, early in the day, uh, you know, with these kind of markets, you could easily get it down that much. But if the Dow were to be down 200 points, you would have a reversal, and then you would have, uh, you know, some real serious problems arising. Uh, we have problems in the bond market already. Uh, it is approaching the 786 retracement as we speak here at the uh, 154 level. And if we get much below that, uh, we are looking at some pretty serious, uh, pretty serious moves to the downside. Let me put this into Tiger TV so you can take a look at it. Uh, I nibbled at it a little bit at the 618, but that only trade only lasted about five minutes. I didn't risk very much on it, but we're getting close to this 786 now. Okay, we got the Dow down about 60, gold down $10, and the cash S&P down a bit. We'll be right back. Trade with confidence and clarity while using the software that thousands of institutional traders rely on to make the best and most accurate decisions. Choose from a thousand equities, currencies, and futures instruments utilizing the TAS architecture. As seen on Bloomberg terminals worldwide, the TAS Profile Scanner is a benchmark technical filtering system that thousands of traders rely on, and now you can too. For a limited time for TFNN subscribers only, we've reduced the price to just $97. That's over 75% off. John Logan hosted a special subscriber-only webinar in December, and you'll gain access to that archive as well, so you can learn exactly what the TAS Profile Scanner can do for you. Try this product out. No matter what you trade, the TAS Profile Scanner can help you make more informed trading decisions. There's no obligation to pay anything. Don't let this offer pass you by. Get your 30-day free trial to the TAS Profile Scanner today by signing up at TFNN.com. 
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on Chinese stocks, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary for Prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Larry takes your phone calls now. now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648, internationally at 727-445-1044. Okay, we're back, folks, and I've posted the chart for the IBB, the biotech index, because uh, we are completing a Gartley pattern up here today. Uh, we made a slightly higher high than Friday, which is uh, acceptable. We left a huge gap on Friday, which is certainly understandable because the whole world had to own stocks in that first half hour or first hour. So uh, that certainly tells you, you know, where you are. Now, I wanted to uh, show you something that you just don't see very often, and I am uh, always respect gaps because they, they mean a great deal. Uh, right now, I'm going to take a look at this New York Stock Exchange Index because this really I could tell a story if the market closes uh, you know sharply lower today uh, basically what we're looking at here let me get this posted into the room will be okay what we're looking at here on this New York Stock Exchange Index is a perfectly symmetrical uh, head and shoulders pattern the distance between the shoulder and the head is equal a head to the shoulder is equal and the, the good part is is that the right shoulder the one that we had on Friday uh, is exactly at the same price as the left shoulder that we had way back on uh, April the 18th so as long as we and, and and if you take a look at this if you look at this gap that's there uh, this is a huge gap this is bigger 
than the gap that we had back in December when the market really exploded. So this is one of the largest gaps we've had in stocks in recent memory. That's also a test to that why that tick index went crazy. And frankly, when, when you look at that, the numbers that those people talk about, I mean, you're talking about an employment number of 233,000 for non-farm payrolls, and they were guessing around 160 or 180. That's a difference of around 50 or 60,000. And when you can stop and think how many people are in the payroll group, I mean, this is nothing. And not only that, but they reduced the number of last month that was terrible. They made it even worse, but they just you know, didn't bring that to anybody's attention. So uh, they respond to these things really, really crazy. So you can't really be in the markets during those times. I don't know if it's Fed time or not, but somebody's doing something in those markets to, to goose them like that because the market does not like gaps. It has a tendency to fill gaps. There's only a few times in history where I have not seen, you know, gaps that have not been fulfilled. And one of them was back in the Desert Storm War back in January of 91. I don't that the gap in the Dow Jones was huge. Uh, I think the market was up eight percent that day, one of the largest days ever, and uh, left a massive gap. That'll be filled someday, but whether it's in my lifetime or not, you know, I I don't know if it will be or not. Um, I had some questions here that people asked me. Uh, one is about the bubble scenario. If we have a bubble going, folks, uh, if you're in a bubble, you if you think you're in a bubble, you probably are. But when it's going to bust, you don't really know for sure. Uh, you've got some stocks here in the in New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ that are up five, six thousand uh, percent, you know, over the past five years. Uh, that certainly constitutes a bull market, whether it's a bubble or not, you know, remains to be seen. Uh, I rely on the work of Basil Chapman on bubbles because he's done a great deal of research on this. And uh, we could easily have another leg up in stocks. Uh, you know, I've been very bearish since May. Uh, and, you know, when we went above those, uh, not excuse me, May, since July, and then we had the big break, and then, the, you know, the market broke about 8%, which was good. Uh, then we've been backing and filling ever since, and we have, uh, you know, we're very close to where we were uh, last July in the New York Stock Exchange Index. It's not more than 1% off from where it was. So there's certain parts of the market that are really big, but there are other parts that are certainly not doing, you know, what they think they should be doing. So we have to uh, look at each segment carefully. Now, I wanted to share with you uh, something. I hope, oh, we're going to have to do it after the break. But uh, this is something, uh, the technical uh, pattern that is is really a, an amazing pattern. Uh, let me do it here in live. I want to see how it's doing because it should have followed through today. Give me one second here, and maybe we'll get this ready. We're almost at the 786 in Treasury bonds. I've got an order there to buy them. And I got a really close stop, so we want to watch this. But I want to show you uh, the banking index here because this has one of the most powerful patterns you can have. Uh, it's called the Twentyman line from my good friend Jim Twentyman, and uh, it's. I'll explain to this more when we get into the uh, after we come back from the break because it's a really unusual pattern uh, that occurs, and it doesn't happen very often. But when it does. It's uh, really powerful. I might as well go into it now until we come to the break. You'll notice that that downtrending line that we have uh, was touched again last week on uh, Wednesday, and then the market reversed. And that acts as a fulcrum that almost catapults the market to higher levels. So uh, this is the one index you don't want to mess with uh, from the short side. If it goes back below that line, which would be at 7360, it's good night. Irene, but uh, until it does that, it looks like it's going higher. Got to take a little break here. We got gold down about $9 and th the Dow Jones down about 50 Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely 
completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern, and you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV, but if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.com. MOBI in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This this segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, uh, the next chart we're going to take a look at here is the U.S. dollar uh, ETF for the U.S. dollar. As you can see, we're completing a very large ABCD pattern here. Uh, in the U.S. dollar. Uh, it looks like we completed it a couple days ago now. The pound has gone uh, ballistic here these last few days because of the election. Uh, evidently, that's made everything going to be like Camelot over there. And uh, we've taken out the highs of uh, a week ago at that 155 level. We're almost up at 156, uh, just a few pips away from that, which we should make uh, relatively easily. And uh, there's another indication of what news happened to, to that market, but it's a very interesting situation. Now, the dollar uh, should start to strengthen here, and that would be the main strength here would be, uh, you know, against the euro. And so the euro should start to uh, sell off if this is, in fact, going to, if, if this is going to be the case. We'll have to keep a really close eye on this because, remember, that dollar index started at 75. It went all the way up. 
uh, to, I believe, 103, and now we're down to that 94 level. So we've had a pretty good correction here. And as I mentioned, it's the first significant A, B, C, D correction that we've had since this whole move started. And we, we've had a couple of really small ones, but we've never had a really significant one. So this is a, this is a really uh, mother God and country stuff because uh, if it doesn't hold here and uh, the dollar index goes below 90, uh, that would mean that the euro is going to get above the the one the 115 level. Then you would be looking at a situation where we've got uh, you know the dollar is going to weaken and the euro's made a major bottom. My original premise was the euro was going to make 99 as its bottom. I think that's the the really easy number to look at. Uh, we can take a quick look at that on the uh, on the charts here for the weekly. But there's also the possibility that if it doesn't hold this, uh, I mean, if it holds this level, we could have made a major bottom already. There's that, that's, the, you know, a distinct possibility. The reason why I say that is, is the low that we had here uh, just, uh, you know, five weeks ago uh, in the euro when we were down at that, uh, you know, 104 level uh, was exactly 707 of the low from uh, 2000. I was looking for it to come into at the 786. But it might be that it's going to be the 707, which is already fulfilled. So what we have to do now is determine where we are within this range because we've been rallying for six weeks. And uh, we've completed a really nice ABCD pattern uh, on the euro. Uh, it's uh, quite easy to see. In fact, the easiest way to look at it, it what I do is I use a 240-minute chart uh, to bring it up. And we'll take a quick look at it. He'll be able to see this real easily here. Give me one second here, and we'll be able to pull this up. And you'll be able to see the large ABCD pattern here in the euro that is completed. And now we're starting you know, to see the uh, market come down. So far, we've come down uh, to the 786 retracement of the, the low we made um, last uh, Thursday on the 5th. But that was, uh, you know, just a minor low. And uh, whether this is going to be the turn or not, we'll have to wait and see. But it's going to be interesting, as it always is. But we've got to keep an eye on it no matter what happens because it's always interesting for sure. Okay, now... Um, Another question about Apple. Folks, I don't know where Apple's going. I just don't think it's going to take out the 133 level. I believe it's going to go lower. We got down to 123. We rallied back to 127, which was virtually nothing. And the market's doing nothing but backing and filling right now. I mean, this stock is in the news constantly, uh, all the time, by everybody. I mean, it literally has got the... the, the, uh, the, the most inexpensive advertising that anybody could ever ever asked for. So I would uh, just wait and see what's going to happen with the watch. I was not impressed with the watch because it's just too darn complicated to look at. And so I would think that I would have to pass and, uh, you know, wait and see, you know, what's going to happen, you know, down the road. Maybe someday I will get one, but frankly, I doubt it because I don't like computers anyway. And this is a computer about the size of a matchbook or less. And, uh, I'm sure it's cool, and it's a great novelty item, but, of course, I said the same thing about color TVs and microwave ovens, folks, so keep that in mind when I make a recommendation for something like this. So we'll have to wait and see if we can find something out like that. And uh, we have a, cost, a question here um, about the gold and silver. And uh, silver had a very interesting uh, day uh, the other day. We, we just went up to this exact 7, 8, 6 and stop. Let me put the... Uh, I'll put the silver chart up first because uh, it shows that we are breaking down out of this little triangle that I uh, posted over the weekend, and uh, I, you know it should have it should have had the, the potential to go to the upside, but it certainly has not yet. Let me get this in here so we can all see it. And uh, the same thing is true with gold. All gold did was go up and make a high of a 786 retracement of the previous high. So we're still in these triangles in both gold and silver. We have not broke out to the upside. We've not broken out to the downside. Uh, the only thing we've done in silver and gold was to violate that little trend line that's there that came in off of the lows from, uh, from early April. That's the main thing that's happened. Nothing else, uh, any significance uh, in the silver uh, at all. If we take a look at the gold market, we see pretty much the same thing, only it's a little, a little, uh, a little more bullish than anything else, 
And when we're finished here, I wanted to mention about buying gold, buying silver coins. Folks, I really highly recommend. I know silver's down today, and we've broken out of the gold to the downside also. But give me a second here to talk about the silver because I really believe everybody should buy some silver coins. The uh, dimes, quarters, and halves from um, 1964 and under, they are um, – 90% silver. They're like a little piece of bullion. Everybody knows what they're worth. Uh, they're easily uh, transferable. You can use them for, you know, buying things. But have at least a thousand dollar face value uh, at home uh, for yourself. If you take a thousand dollars, it's going to cost you uh, probably about sixteen grand if you can. You can buy a half bag or a quarter bag, but have some uh, just in case because. Uh, we live in interesting times, to say the least, and uh, I believe that the real problem when it comes is going to be a lot worse than what we think it is, and you should have that for a little bit of safety. Uh, the dried foods, I'm not so sure about that. My good friend Arch Crawford is the master of, of dried foods. Uh, it, it's really funny because he buys it, and then as it starts to get out of date, he has to eat it. And uh, he's gone through, I think it's eight years. Well, wow, it's more than that. Why 2000? So it's been 15 years that he's been doing that. And like he told me once, the paranoid man only has to be right once to prove that he's right. So I'll let Arch, you know, go by the wayside and tell me what's going to happen with that uh, down the road. So we'll see if it's going to be. Uh, uh, I, I think something something serious is coming. We're starting to see uh, riots for a lot of different things. That's a, another really bad sign, uh, given the things that. Uh, 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 Mr. Uh, Chap Basil Chapman talked about, you know, the, the socioeconomic things that occur during these times, and that's another thing that is uh, a little bit uh, on the sinister nation na nature that we have to uh, that we have to watch about, you know, watch very very closely. Okay, now uh, the question that we asked about the silver coins, uh, and they asked the difference between gold and silver. And I believe that the silver is better uh, for most people than gold. Uh, it's a little less expensive. Uh, the, the quality of the coins are absolutely beautiful, and they're easily transferable. So that's something that you've got to keep in mind. You don't want to buy bullion, folks. The reason why is bullion is not easily transferable. If you take it in to buy it, someone has to come in and take a look at it to see how much it's worth. It's got to be assayed. And that could be somewhere between $100 and $150 to have it assayed. And that's something that you don't want to, uh, to have happen. So keep that in mind. So that's the main thing that uh, when you're doing with gold and silver, read about it. There's lots of stuff on the Internet. Just you know, just Google in there buying gold and silver, how to find a quality dealer where you are. You know, a guy that handles uh, silver coins, a coin dealer, said usually they're related to the ANA, the American Numismatic Association, or the PCGS, which is Professional Corn Grading Service. And uh, you can, you know, find out what you're looking at. And it's a fun thing. It's a great habit to be in. And if you have children, boy, there's nothing uh, you can teach them any better than uh, teaching them about coins and money. Uh, it's really important. I was fortunate enough to be able to do that to my kids, and gold was only $120 an ounce when they were born, So, and silver was uh, $4, so it was really, uh, really funny. When we, whenever we moved, I had, my, I had three full bags of silver. They each weighed 54 pounds, and so I had a little trolley, a little, uh, you know, carry case. Uh, what do you call it? It's a trolley, yeah. Um, uh, I forget what they call those things. But anyway, it was this. I put these three bags on the trolley, weighed 150 pounds, and my father-in-law and I would walk through the airports, and we didn't have check-in and stuff like that. And I had them put in, uh, you know, special bags so that you couldn't tell that that's what they were. And I just checked them through. And then we went from Indianapolis to California back and forth a couple times with those bags. And I kept them for a very long time, and I finally sold them at 20,000 a bag. And the highest they ever got was about 27000 a bag. And uh, I still have a lot. Not a lot. I don't have as much as I used to have because I'm, I'm old now. I'm in the seven furlong of an eight furlong race, so I... I got to spend the stuff as I as I see fit, but it was still it was still fun to do it. Now I'm doing it with my grandson, and teaching him how to uh, you know to collect and to, to put things away, 
and they have a store of value because they don't make those things anymore and they get older they get you know more and more 50 years from now they're going to be really valuable so that's a long time i will not be here for that event but it would be fun to talk about it in the history books back to the market the important thing today folks is that if we close strong, if the market, you know, gets above those highs that we made on Friday and we close strong, I don't see any reason why this market can't go. I mean, there's a lot of things that saying it could be bearish, but there's also a few things there that say it could be bullish. And if we do if we do go through really a, a great deal of strength here towards the close, I believe that we have a chance to take out those highs of April 27th. And if we do that, the market's going to go higher. Now, if we close in the low end of the range, uh, you know, down about, say, 100 in the Dow, then that would tell us that, well, maybe this is the – that one day was an aberration like it was two weeks ago on Friday when we had the Dow up 250 points. So this is the key time to look at it. On the, if you think that's going to happen, if you look at the VIX index, that's telling you that somebody is taking protection here because they're willing to step in when that VIX index gap down and they were buying it. It was still up on the week, if you can believe that. I mean, that was unbelievable statistic when I heard it. I didn't see how in the world it could possibly be up on the week, but it was. And, uh, you know, it's higher so far this week. So if the market's bad, it's going to react today or maybe tomorrow and, and start giving some of this back. And people are going to realize that this was nothing more than a, than a one-day wonder, and you don't want to, uh, to worry about that. Uh, by the way, on Wednesday's show, uh, we're going to have Norm Winsky back because uh, he's got some good information on uh, some of the key dates. Uh, he had a couple of really good dates recently for us, so we'll put his feet to the fire and maybe ask him some questions about what he sees uh, you know, happening uh, with the markets and stuff. Because when you see these types of volatile markets, these are ideal uh, for pattern recognition with the exception of one thing, and that is the uh, these huge gaps. I mean, that's just... Uh, Gaps are really tough. That's really tough. You know, that's we'll see what you had. So anyway, um, the um, we're going to talk a little bit about the crude oil here for a second. We've got a question here uh, about crude oil. Give me a second to put it up and then I will talk it because I, crude oil has one of the most bearish patterns uh, that you can get. And that is this uh, uh, candlestick pattern called the shooting star. And uh, it is really uh, a, a very negative pattern. Uh, you know, remember oil went from 42 up to uh, 62. It had a $20 a barrel rally when everybody thought that it was going to go to to uh, 20 or 30 dollars a barrel. But this uh, shooting star candle that we had uh, back on the the 6th of May uh, was really a very very negative candle. I mean, it was way you you opened high. Uh, and sold off at the end of the day, and then the market has come down. We haven't had much of a correction yet. What you'd like to see here is you'd like to see a 61% retracement up to about the 60-50 level, up about a dollar and a half a barrel, and that's where you'd want to be looking to take a potential short sale because at that point, you're at a very, very low risk area of uh, you know watching this. If we look at, if we look at oil on the long-term weekly basis here, give me one second here, You'll see this on the weekly basis. This thing has not even made a 382 retracement of the June highs from last year. So, uh, you know, this is a very, very bearish market. It's been a really strong rally, which it should have been because the, the harder the markets bounce, uh, the harder they fall, the, the faster they bounce back. So you want to remember that uh, when, you're, when you're trading some of these things because it makes them look like you're going to, uh, you know, uh, go go down forever, and at that point they turn around and zoom away. They go. We saw this in March of uh, 2009, but uh, that has not uh, had occurred to this much. We got a uh, break coming up here in just a second. Here we'll take a look at what the markets are doing. We got the Dow down about uh, what is it? About 60 points. Uh, gold down about six dollars, and silver down 19 cents. We'll be right back after these breaks.
Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Do you know the seven most critical factors that influence every decision you make and how not knowing these will jeopardize the health, the wealth, and the relationships you deserve? I'm Steve Rhodes, morning host at TFNN.com, and for the last quarter of a century, I've studied and used the secrets of human growth, the same formulas used by leaders of nations, billionaires and millionaires, and the most successful athletes on the planet. Would you like to break through any obstacle that gets in between you and the success you deserve? Would you like to turn fear into strength? If you could find a way to achieve, be fulfilled, and live a life of meaning, wouldn't you want to know the answer? I'll teach you the factors that control your state of mind and the drivers that impact every thought, emotion, behavior, and action we take in my new webinar, The Psychology of Trading. Join me for this two-part online event where I'll unveil the secrets to human pattern recognition because they're not what you think. And soon, you'll have the health, the wealth, and the relationships you deserve. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on The Psychology of Trading to begin your journey now. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and I'm going to uh, end the show here with a chart of the uh, NASDAQ going over the last uh, five weeks. It's an hourly chart, and uh, as you can see here, we have that 135 pattern. That's where you have the lower highs. Now, remember, uh, these are very, very symmetrical. The move uh, into point three was equal to the move into point five. Uh, the time distance between one 
three and five are all equal. So the importance of today's uh, action is very, very important because if we close strong, it's going to mean that we're going to uh, go a lot higher. Now, we did take out the highs of Friday by two points in the NASDAQ, and then we quickly reversed and uh, dropped about uh, 30 uh, NASDAQ points, but we've since come back. It's still you know, holding up relatively well. Uh, but if it does close badly, then you can see that you could run into one of these situations where you move down and actually could go below the lows of uh, May the 7th. But uh, remember, it's the key is the, the highs of April 27th. If we take those out, then you're basically you don't want to be uh, don't want to be involved uh, on the short side of this market because you could have a breakout. The things that are positive uh, for that to happen, one is that banking index. Uh, with that uh, catapult 20 min line, that could be a really big thing uh, to be watching. And so that's something that uh, could very easily uh, cause some uh, uh, really wild things uh, to happen in the market. So uh, a lot of things this week. We got the dollar index making that ABCD pattern. We've had that big gap up on Friday where we need follow through to be bullish. Uh, if we don't get follow through, it's very bearish, just like it was two weeks ago when we dropped uh, over 600 Dow points in a few days. The same thing could happen again. Uh, the NASDAQ is showing negative divergence by quite a bit. Uh, we have a Gartley sell pattern in the IBB biotech uh, index uh, coming up. Uh, and yet we still have some stocks that still look pretty strong. So it's the jury's out. You got to be really careful and uh, as uh, Art Cashin says, be nimble, be very, very nimble. And uh, it's always a good thing to watch. But uh, keep an eye. If we're really strong today on the close, then I would think we're probably going to be strong for the rest of the week. And uh, who knows where the market can go? Because we have not had a spectacular blow-off move in this you know, uh, market like we've had in 2000. And uh, like we had, well, we didn't have one in 2007 either. It died like a quail. I just made a slightly higher high in October of 07 and then collapsed. But uh, we have, you know, a lot of things that are telling us that we should be turning down here, but the market just keeps coming back. Uh, the interest rates are going higher, folks. There's, there's no doubt about that. All you have to do is look at a bond chart, and that'll tell you that you are going higher. There's no other way to look at it. Rates are going higher. It's a question of whether the Fed decides to... Uh, belly up to the bar and say, yes, interest rates are going higher, and uh, they'll, in fact, raise rates by a quarter of an eighth of a point or something ridiculous amount, and that'll probably shake the stock market up a little bit, and then it'll go doing what it's supposed to be doing anyway. So quantitative easing is not going to be easy for those boys to w uh, wind down. That's my feeling. But, uh, you know, what do I know? I'm just looking at the charts. These bonds have been going down for weeks. We've had higher interest rates for a long time, from 164 to 153. That's 11-point drop in bonds. That's a big drop, folks. And that market's six times bigger than the stock markets. So you've got to pay attention to it because rates are going higher. There's no qu And notes are, notes are telling you the same thing, that, that they're going higher. So uh, those things are very, very important, and you want to be able to say that uh, – you know, you don't want to stand in front of it because, uh, you know, maybe the, maybe this is the place to buy bonds. You know, if they can hold the 786 here at this 154 level, we're trading 154.08. Now, maybe we're going to get a bounce here like we had on Friday. We, we had tremendous action. That's it, folks. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. 
Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. You're watching Tiger TV.